All right, here's the last lesson of this unit. Uh, I'm going to mess around with graphs a little bit more. Uh, yes, the uh, last lesson was uh, moving graphs up and down, left and right. And this one is going to be expanding and contracting, making them skinnier, you know, making the V's open up or, or shrink up, or the parabolas, same thing. So we're still going to see absolute value and quadratics, but we're going to see the numbers in different places. So let's start with something like this. Nice, clean, simple one. Help demonstrate what's going on here. So the new thing here is that we now have a number in the front multiplied by the function. But I went ahead and kept it simple and didn't make this one shift. I don't have any other numbers in there yet. By the time we're done here, we're going to have stuff here. We're going to put numbers in here. We'll have numbers here. But this is just to focus on what this does. What does a number in the front of a function do to the function? Well, why not just see? Right? So we're going to, as always, when in doubt, get really good at this, and you'll always be fine. Make a table. Let's go ahead and start with the basic. Start with a negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And start plugging the numbers in. If you take negative 2, plug it in here, it becomes positive 2. And then positive 2 times 3 is positive 6. So this is 6. Put a negative 1 in there, you get positive 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 3 is 0. Then you go to the... You know, if you put a positive in there, it's still positive. So this is 1 times 3 is 3. It's going to look just like that. And then same thing here, 2 times 3 is 6. Now, more importantly, let's see what that graph ends up looking like. It's negative 2, 6. Right there. Negative 1, 3. 0, 0. 1, 3. 2, 6. Connect the dots. And pretty simple. Not only simple to do, but also probably, hopefully for you, simple to understand what just happened. This number being a 3 makes the graph, instead of the normal V would have been out here like this. And the bigger this number gets, the more this thing gets skinnier. And that's it. How skinny? Well, you can always do this to get the details. You know, you still you, these numbers right here are what created this thing. Um, you know, closing up more, being skinnier. Now let's do it again. So a couple, there's a couple things going on here, new in this one. Number one, what if I put the number inside of the absolute value instead of on the outside? And how does that affect things? And then secondly, we have a fraction now. And you know, we got to talk about that. But once again, why don't we just see what's going on? Now this time, I probably, if you don't want to have to deal with a bunch of fractions in the table, we should just put in smart numbers here. So what I mean by that is maybe we should put in, how about negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6. I mean, you're looking at that 1 third there, and you, you should be thinking to yourself, if I put like a 1 or a 2 in there, I'm going to have answers that are fractions, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with getting answers that are fractions. But if, you don't, if you're in control of it, you're the one who gets to pick these numbers here. Why not pick numbers that create you know, integers over here instead? So let's see what's going on here. We've got... We're going to take negative 6, plug it in for x. This time we're going to multiply the negative 6 times this number first and then take the absolute value. I'll give you a little hint. It doesn't really change anything right now. Having this number here or here for absolute value, it's not going to affect it, at least not in a situation like this. So uh, I'll do one of them by hand here for you, just so you make sure you understand what I'm saying. Um, it'd be absolute value of one-third times negative six which would be absolute value of negative two and that would be two so this is going to be a two 
and hopefully you see why I'm doing these in my head mostly because what am I really doing there? There's no major work going on. Uh, one third of six is two and it's a positive times a negative so it's negative two. And then, the, then at the end you take the absolute value to get the positive. Obviously in this problem everything's going to turn out positive over here because in the end we're taking the absolute value. Um, so negative three, one third of negative th three if I take this number right here, put it in here, if you take one third of three, you get one, but it's negative, so it's negative one, but then absolute value makes it positive one. Zero, everything just turns to a zero. One third of three is one, absolute value one is one, and one third of six is two, absolute value two is two. Let's look at the graph. Negative six. Two. So over here, negative three one zero zero three one six two, and there you go. Probably what you would have thought would have happened there. Maybe when the number when there's a number in front being multiplied, whether it's here or if it's outside of the absolute value. It's going to affect the graph by making the V open up when it's a fraction. When that number right there is less than one, like one third, one half, you know, whatever number, then it's going to actually make this thing expand and get bigger, open up more. Where when this number is a number bigger than one, like two, three, four, whatever numbers like that, then it's going to make it get skinnier, like you saw on the on the last one. Let's do it again. Not too much different here. We got I got I did bring in a couple new things. So the one new thing is what if we put a negative in the front? And why don't we mix in our old stuff that we already talked about where we're shifting things around? This is going to shift left right. This shifts it up and down. This makes it get skinnier and then we'll see what this is going to do. I think on this one I would start at least graphing a little bit cuz we know something already. We already know that this thing is going to shift to the left one and down one. Remember this is the number that makes it move up and down and it's normal. If it's negative it goes down. This one here it's left and right but it's opposite of normal. So plus does not go to the right it makes it move to the left. So this is going to be left one down one. And what I mean by that is left one down one. I mean that's going to be the vertex for the V. We don't exactly know how the V is going to go yet, but we know it's going to, the pointy part of the V is going to be from here. So it could go like this, could be out here, could be real skinny, could be upside down. Who knows? Let's see. That was a hint. Foreshadowing. All right, so let's still plot some points, but this time, since we already put the vertex on there, we know what numbers we want to uh, plug in here. In other words, if, if we know this is going to be the center or the, the middle of the, of the V, whatever it, whatever it might end up looking like, if this is the middle of it, then we just want to put some numbers this way and this way from here. So I'm going to pick negative 3 and negative 2. We can see that negative 1 is the vertex, so we're going to skip over that, and then we'll just go 0, 1. How about we just put those four points in there? That's two points. That's two x values to the left of here, right? That's these two right here. And then we've got two to the right, which would be this one and this one. So here's the middle, negative two, negative three, that's those two, and then zero and one, those two. So let's put those numbers in there. Let's, uh, let's do some math here. I'm gonna still do these in my head. If you ever need, if you feel like that's a little much for you, you, you know, you're welcome to do scratch paper, you know, off to the side somewhere and do it. I just, on these videos, it's hard for me to do that, and I feel like we've got pretty low-level math here. I'm going to take negative 3, I'm going to put it right there. Well, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. You know, if you need to, to write all that down somewhere, 
go for it. I'm trying to talk you through it slow there, though. Next one. Negative 2 is going in here. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, but then it becomes positive 1. And then we're going to multiply positive 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. And negative, this whole thing's negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. 0. And this is where you could almost not graph the other two points and just know that they're going to be the same because when we, like for example, we just put negative 2 in there. It created negative 1, but then absolute value was 1. Well, 0 is going to do the same thing. 0 plus 1 is 1, absolute value is 1. Remember, these are v's, so they have these symmetrical things. So this is still going to be negative 3, and this is still going to be negative 5. I'll explain that a little more here as I graph, too. So negative 3, negative 5 is going to be right here. And negative 2, negative 3 is going to be right here. Since we know that this is the middle, the vertex right here, then we know there's a point on the opposite side here. And we know there's a point on the opposite side over here that goes with that. So even if you didn't do this math for these two, just by getting the one half of it, you automatically can transfer that to the other side. Just, to, just something to think about. I mean, it's not that big a deal just to, to do what I'm doing here, but I want you to understand what's happening here. So that's going to go there, and then this one's going to go here. Notice that that is flipping over this middle line that could you could imagine going through that V, and the same thing here. But also notice that 0, negative 3 is that point right there, and 1, negative 5 is that point right there. So I, you can either do it with mathematically, or you can just plot a couple points mathematically and then see the relationship on the other side. Connect the dots, you make a V. That's the graph. But more importantly, let's look at what's going on here. We've got, we already knew about our shift. We know the plus one and the minus one are what move this thing to here. We know that this two makes the graph skinnier, a little more uh, steep. This, if this two wasn't here, the, it might have been you know, out here, like something like that. But the bigger this number is, the skinnier the thing gets. So it went like this. If this was a three, maybe it would look like this. If this was a four, maybe it would be like this. If this was a hundred, you wouldn't even be like the skinniest V you'd ever seen. Okay? And then finally, now we just learn what the negative in the front does. It flips over things. So instead of the V going this way, it's now going the other way. It's a reflection over this line right here. It would have been here. It got flipped over. One more. This last one, I went ahead and, and went away from absolute value. You're going to see a few of the, the squared equations in there, too. Um, so I wanted to talk about that as well. So when I look, <coughs> when I look at this one, what I'm seeing is it's going to be a parabola, a you know U-shaped object. We already know it's going to go shifting up two and right one. This two is going to make it skinnier, and it's going to flip upside down. I already know all that just by looking at it. One more time, it's going to be a parabola, right one, up two, skinnier than normal, and flipped upside down. That's what's all going to happen here. I already know it without even doing anything. But, you know, we need to go, we got to actually draw it. <clears throat> so I would start, I would go straight to the graph. And you have your, you have your right one and your up two. So right one, up two. That's going to be the vertex for the parabola. We do know that the parabola is going to, its main point is going to be right in here. Because this is negative, it's definitely going to be going down here, like this. And that 2, that 2, we, we don't know exactly what it's going to do. We just know the bigger this number is, the skinnier the parabola will get. But to do that, that's why we still need to plot some points so we can see the details. But knowing this makes it a lot easier to know which points you want to do. 
you're going to want to put a couple points to the left of that of one. This is x equals one right here. So maybe a couple points this way, a couple points this way, done. So that would look something like this. I'm going to go negative one, zero, and then two and three. One more time. Notice that negative one and zero are this spot right here and zero right here. We already know the one, x equals one, we already know is right there at two for y. Then we're going to plug in two and three, which would be over here. And we're going to get some values that are going to draw what we already kind of know is happening. And then of course it just comes down to arithmetic, down to math here. We're going to take negative one, plug it in here, we get negative two. Negative one minus one is negative two. Negative two times negative two, because it's squared, is four. So this is positive four times negative two is negative eight, and then negative eight plus two is negative six. As I always say, if that's uh, too much for you, just write it out, show your work, use a calculator, whatever you need to do, but you have to figure out how to get these numbers correct. It's not that bad if you just take the time to think about what's going on. Really concentrate when you're plugging these numbers in. Uh, zero minus one is negative one. Negative one squared is positive one. Positive one times negative two is negative two and negative two plus two is zero. Now, like I've been saying, I already know that these two are gonna be the same values over on the other side, because it's a parabola, symmetric, but you know it's always good to just plug them in. So here we go. Two minus one, I put the two right here. Two minus one is one, one times one is one, one times negative two is negative two, negative two plus two is zero. See how fast? And three minus one is two, two squared is four, four times negative two is negative eight, and negative eight plus two is negative six. Notice the pattern that these match and then these match. If they don't, something's not right. Negative one, negative six, right there, zero, zero, two, zero, three, negative six. And now we have a pretty good picture of this situation. That's really it. That's really all we can do to a function. We can make it shift to the right or left. We can make it shift up and down. We can stretch it or, or shrink it, and, you know, make, make it open up or not a lot or a little, whatever. And we can flip it. One more time. Right left movement, up down movement, uh, expand or contract movement, and then flip or no flip. If it's negative, it flips. If there's no negative in the front of the problem, then it will just be the norm. It would have been this here. So that's that. Hope that helps. Work hard. Be nice. See you soon.